Hi everyone, in today's video we'll take a look at how you can use GPG, the command line interface to encrypt and decrypt files and we'll also in process take a look at how you can manage the life cycle of keys uh, specifically when it comes to asynchronous uh, encryption, how you can export and import keys and uh, we'll be doing that both for the public and the secret aka the private keys. And uh, in the demo will be taking a look at a uh, few of the most commonly used commands and how we can effectively encrypt files uh, using GPG. That's the scope of the video and l next let's take a look at uh, the setup that we have. Alright, so I have three different nodes here uh, that we'll be using to perform the encrypt and decrypt process. Uh, here uh, you can see I have machine one uh, which is our first decrypt server, oops, uh, that's our first, uh, uh, let me get rid of that, host name. Alright, so that's our first decrypt server. Here we have our encrypt server and towards the end we'll take a look at how we can move uh, even the private keys around and uh, take the private key from one computer, move it to another computer and decrypt the files using a second computer. So that's the setup that we have here and uh, in terms of uh, the software setup itself um, you'll need to make sure that you have GNU PG installed. Um, so again the commands will vary based on the Linux distribution. If you're using uh, Debian Ubuntu based uh, operating system then you can do an app get install GNU PG. And uh, the quickest way to verify that uh, everything's installed is run GPG. And again, keep in mind that if it's the first time that uh, you're running the command, chances are you'll see a bunch of um, additional information, um, specifically when it's uh, run for the first time. Uh, so the other thing to keep in mind is while most of the commands I'm showing you should stay consistent across GPG uh, versions, uh, in case there's any discrepancies, uh, you would want to double check the command line help so that's gpg and help and it should uh, give you a list of um, some of the commands that i'm using and uh, the one specific to the gpg version you have installed on your machine all right so that's uh, pretty much it for the uh, demo environment and the installation so let's start off by using keys uh, so the very first thing that you may want to do is actually generate the keys or in some instances you already have keys on your machine and uh, it's a good idea to verify if there are any keys uh, existing already. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, one of the first commands we have here is to list uh, secret keys. So if I run this command, um, ignore that from, um, um, uh, the uh, the print text, uh, again that happens only the first time that you run it, does some initialization and setup. Um, so here you can see that we don't have any uh, secret keys already, so that's, uh, that's one way to verify if you have any keys already in existence. So since we don't have any, um, let's go ahead and create a key. So again, depending on um, your addition of um, your operating system and the GPG version, the commands might vary, uh, but I'm going to be using uh, gen dash key. In your case, it might be full generate key. So uh, um, again, go to the help or try either of these commands. Uh, so let's uh, generate the key and I'll go with the default. Let's uh, go ahead with RSA, uh, go ahead with the default. Again, um, larger, uh, bits uh, for your key would uh, ensure that you have a better key uh, for encryption. Um, but I want to generate a key really quickly, so I'll go ahead and use all the defaults. Uh, let's give it a name, so Melvin. Uh, again, keep in mind it's a uh, case sensitive and it's um, the name slash ID is something that you'll need uh, to use fairly often. Um, okay, so let's give a uh, email ID, Melvin at, no, uh, oh no com. that's basically where I live and okay enter a passphrase um, so again depending on um, your operating system and GPG version it might have some constraints or there are a number of characters and either special characters or numbers uh, make sure you provide some value that uh, is easy to remember or is something that you don't forget uh, 
asking me to verify. All right, so behind the scene, it's uh, created uh, the key. Again, um, if you select a key with a longer length, uh, then uh, obviously the time will vary. So right now it's created the key. Let's go ahead and uh, list the keys right now. So you remember the last time we ran it, um, did not have any keys. This time we have generated a key, so it's able to list uh, the secret key. All right, so now that we have a key, let's go ahead and um, let's actually perform some encryption operation. So the first thing that we will want to do is uh, we will want to export uh, our public key uh, to our second machine here, which is going to be used for encryption. And um, we'll perform the encryption operation here and then go back here and do the decryption. Uh, so the way we can export our public key, again, keep in mind this time around, we are only exporting our public key. Uh, so again, the public key is not sensitive. It's uh, something that you can share openly with anyone. Um, so here's our public key. So basically, um, the command that you saw me run here was to export it, um, and it'll export it in a ASCII text format. Uh, again, human readable, but uh, it's uh, highly unlikely that anybody's going to read this anyway. Uh, so this is a plain text file, uh, so you can either copy and paste this text or copy the file over to our second server. Uh, so here we have our encrypt server, so uh, in the real world obviously this um, the file sitting here on this server, you might want to SCP that file over to the second server. However, in, in my demo environment, um, I've volume mounted so I can share files between these systems. So uh, the files, um, so again in my case I don't have to copy the files, it's already there for me. Uh, so the way we can um, work on the second computer again is let's have actually go ahead and take a look at the keys. So um, the last time around we listed secret keys. Uh, running this command lists both um, private and secret keys. I'm sorry, public and secret keys. So again, that was the first time we were running it, so it gave a lot of noise. So here we are saying we don't have any keys, so let's go ahead and import that key. All right, so on the second computer, let's go ahead and import uh, that public key. So let me switch over to demo. And here I have the public key here. So let's take a look at how we can import that. So let's run this command now. So note again that this time we are only working with the public key. So let's go ahead and um, run that command. Or just before we do that, let's actually go ahead and list keys. Uh, so this command lists both uh, public and uh, secret keys, other private keys. So let's clear that, run that again. So sure enough, we don't have any keys. Uh, this is a blank machine. Um, so now let's go ahead and import that key. Okay, so that command has completed and we should now see those keys when we list the keys. Uh, sure enough, uh, we now have a public key here. Uh, again, it's only imported the public key. Uh, it should not have uh, received any private key. So if we list any secret keys on this machine, um, sure enough, we don't have any private keys. It's uh, just got that one public key listed there. Uh, so now let's go ahead and use that public key to encrypt a file. And the way we can do that is to uh, use the encryption command. Uh, again, keep in mind that uh, we have other steps we'll complete later on how we can export and import the private keys themselves, but so far we have exported the priv uh, public key, imported it into a second machine, and now let's go ahead and encrypt a file using that public key. So let's copy this command, and here I am on the encrypt machine. And uh, here there's a local file that's users.csv, so cat users.csv. You can see that it's um, a text file, a CSV file uh, containing a lot of customer information and potentially uh, things which uh, either for compliance reasons or privacy reasons you want to encrypt that data and keep. Uh, this is a, a randomly generated data set, uh, but just to illustrate that, uh, yeah, we can use it to um, uh, to encrypt data and um, uh, store that data in a repository or in something like an S3 bucket or various other storage devices, and um, it's basically encryption at rest. 
so let's encrypt that file. Um, so I, oops, I didn't copy that command. So let's copy that again. And here, what we are doing is we are encrypting a file using GPG, uh, using the dash e to encrypt, specifying that it's a file. And here we are using the ID of um, the public key and uh, finally the file itself. So when we run that command, uh, you'll notice that it prompts that, yep, um, you do want to use that key anyway. So, so it does prompt for a yes or no. Um, and once it's completed, you can see that it's generated a file that's GPG, uh, the same as the uh, original input file uh, with the GPG extension. Let me go ahead and remove that file, user.csv, yes users.csv.gpg and um, I think uh, trust always I think is a command so uh, yeah. always trust maybe um, if I remember correctly ah yep yeah. That's um, that's um, parameter you can pass so that it doesn't prompt with a yes or no. You remember the last time when we ran it, it prompted with a yes or no. If you all, uh, specify an always trust, uh, it does not prompt you for that. It's uh, This is helpful if you're running it in something like a bash script, for example, and you don't want to uh, use a prompt to interrupt your script. So, Sure enough, the same command again. We have uh, got a new file here. So that's the GPG encrypted file. Let's go ahead and see what it contains. So if we try and uh, display that, obviously it's no longer text, it's an encrypted file, and that's good news. Uh, so now that we have an encrypted file, let's go ahead and uh, use the first machine here to decrypt the file. Again, keeping in mind that we have encrypted the file using the public key, and the only way that you can decrypt the file is uh, on a machine that has uh, the private key associated with the public key that was used to encrypt the file, and that incidentally is this machine here. Uh, so again, in the real world, you would copy that file over, do an SCP from your encrypt machine to the this, uh, the machine that has uh, the private key. Um, so again, since it's volume mounted, I already have uh, that file locally. So CD uh, demo. Um, so here we have the file. So that's um, the file that was just created on this machine. Um, so let's go ahead and decrypt that file. Um, so right now, I'm going to move that file, move from as old, uh, because when we decrypt the file, it, it might end up overwriting, or not might end up, it will overwrite uh, the file if it already exists. Um, so we are all set now to run the decrypt. So yeah. We have uh, the command to run the decrypt. Again, um, you can either use this command. If it's a small file, uh, it'll uh, display it on your console. But typically, what you'll want is, um, particularly if you're running it in a bash file or in a script, you want to run it with a bash parameter. And also, remember to pass in the phrase that you used when you generated the key. Uh, you may remember when we ran this command, um, it prompted us for a pass phrase. and uh, I've specified demo as the passphrase. Obviously, the keen-eyed uh, folks here will realize that this is not a secure passphrase. It's uh, very simple. But uh, again, this is purely a demo, and hence uh, why I've called it demo. Uh, so let's run that command. OK. You'll not let's take a look at uh, what's in the folder at this point in time. You'll notice that we don't have a CSV key. I've, um, I've uh, renamed that to old. Um, whatever we had earlier. So let's go ahead and run this command now that we can decrypt the file. Uh, again, I'm on the decrypt machine and it already has the private key because we generated the key on this machine. So when I run this command, uh, it's saying that, yep, um, you can ignore that command for the time being, but it's basically encrypted the file. And if I look at the folder again, you'll notice that uh, it's now generated um, a file that uh, user.csv. And if I cat that file, yeah, sure enough, it's uh, it's all plain text and it's uh, usable again. Uh, so that kind of like completes the life cycle of uh, using um, GPG to encrypt and decrypt a file. Uh, 
Uh, however, in the last scenario that I'll cover is uh, when um, we need to export and import the secret key, aka the private key itself. Um, so again, you may remember that we've had the private key um, on this computer because we originally generated the key on this computer and uh, now we have another machine here and we would want to perform uh, the same operation to decrypt the file but um, on this computer um, we d we've not uh, imported the key so let's go ahead and list the keys uh, to verify that we don't have anything going on here um, ignore those uh, noisy messages uh, let me run that again and you'll notice that uh, yep uh, we don't have any of those keys so now let's go ahead and export the key and import it in the second computer so the last time when we ran the import and export command we were working with the public key this time we are going to be exporting and importing the private key so let's go ahead and run that command and here we now have uh, the private key, uh, the file. Now keep in mind that uh, this is uh, unlike the public key, which we uh, it's perfectly okay to SCP the file and uh, you know move that around. Um, this is something that you will want to tightly control access to this file. So in most cases, uh, you will want to use some kind of key management system or a secret management system to actually manage uh, these keys and uh, move these keys around. Uh, However, in a case of the demo, um, I've, uh, as I mentioned, uh, since I've got it volume mounted, I already have it on this machine as well. Um, so this was the file that was uh, just generated and um, I now have this on this machine as well. Um, so let's go ahead and import um, that key. Um, so I'm on the third machine and I'm going to import the private key. So let's go ahead and import the private key. and. This time, if I list the keys, now that we have imported it, uh, sure enough, it tells me that uh, this is the private key uh, that is got here. All right, so now that we have the private key, we can perform the same operation again. So no surprises, we can run this uh, command yet again. So uh, let me open this folder here and remove the users.csv file. Um, Yep, not there anymore. So this time if we run the command again, uh, so again we are decrypting the file on a second server. If we run the command, uh, it's completed the operations and if I list the files, now it's uh, decrypted the file on the second server. And uh, let's verify if things are in order. Yep, um, it's all text CSV files, so everything's back to what we were expecting. Uh, so in summary, what we have seen in this video is how we can use GPG to encrypt and decrypt a file. And we have taken a look at how we can export and import both the public key and the private keys. And we've uh, taken a look at some of the most common slash useful commands uh, that are available at your disposal. Uh, so that wraps it up for this video. Hope you find the video helpful. Thanks for watching.